Okay, hi everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar. So the title of today's webinar is Get Ahead of the Game by Taking Our Online and Blended MSc in Financial Management here at the University of Manchester. So today I'm joined by course director, Dr. Amadeo de Cesari and unit lead, Professor Arif Kershed. So Arif and Amadeo, you, you will have seen or heard from before in, in our previous webinars, have been extremely influential in the development of kind of rolling out this course um, here in Manchester, but also in Shanghai. And all of us here today are really excited to talk to you in more detail about the course, um, what you can expect and how it can really help you in your career. So before I um, introduce myself, I want to kind of talk to you um, a little bit about some housekeeping rules. So if you could all remain muted and, and if you could all turn your videos off, that would be great. Uh, that just kind of ensures that we won't have any distractions when uh, myself and Arif and Amadeo are talking. Um, so this session is being recorded. I'll send around the, the recording after we finish up today. Um, any questions, please feel free to use the chat box. Um, I'll be monitoring that when Arif and Amadeo are talking um, and we can cover those questions towards the end. So a little bit about who I am. So some of you, hopefully, you will have all received quite a lot of emails from me over the past few months. Um, I'm the course advisor uh, for this course. So what that means is this course falls within my portfolio here at the University of Manchester. So my role is to, to really support and guide you at every stage of your application and kind of decision making journey. So I have over four years of experience within the student recruitment and higher education space. Before I moved to Manchester in February this year, I worked down in London for several financial services firms where I looked after campus recruitment. Um, here at the university, I obviously look after this course, but also I manage a variety of other online and blended learning courses as well. So they form in the form of CPD courses, postgraduate certificates and master's degree programmes. So like I said, uh, my main role is to, to kind of support you and offer guidance at every stage of your decision making journey. I'm responsible for delivering webinars such as this one, but also webinars that talk about well-being, talk about kind of online blended learning and the importance of further study. I also conduct individual consultations with prospective students, so like yourself. Um, so this is for me to really get to know you as an individual, to understand your goals, motivations and aspirations to, and to really help you make that informed decision about your next academic career move. So that's something I really enjoy about my role and is something that if you are interested as we're kind of closing this recruitment cycle for September 2020, please do get in touch. Um, I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to kind of offer that support and answer any questions that you have about the course. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand you over to Amadeo. So he's our course director and he's gonna provide you with a little bit of insight into who he is. Thanks a lot, Daisy, for your uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Amedeo De Cesare. I'm the course director for this uh, new uh, blended uh, program, MSc in Financial Management. Uh, so I would like to spend a little bit of, uh, just to talk about myself, some, some time just to talk about myself, who I am, what I do exactly, what I've been doing the last few years. So basically, uh, I am a senior lecturer in finance, so I teach uh, finance to different students. I teach finance to undergraduate students, but also to global MBA students. And basically my expertise in terms of research lies in the areas of corporate finance and corporate governance uh, with a particular focus on topics such as uh, uh, payments of cash to companies like dividend payments, stock repurchases, uh, and also other types of transactions like mergers and acquisitions. Uh, I'm also interested in topics around executive compensation and innovation, which is very, very important nowadays, of course. Now, I want to stress that uh, this, uh, the units of this particular program will be taught by academics uh, from our school. So we want to make sure that basically that our academics are fully committed. Uh, they do uh, a job, a very good job. They have expertise, they have knowledge, both academically and also in terms of being a very good teachers. Uh, for example, as I said, I've been teaching the Global MBA program for quite a long time now. Uh, if you know the Global MBA program, it is quite similar to this program in terms of uh, structure in that in both cases, we have uh, a blended approach. I'm going to say more about this approach later. Uh, so I have quite a lot of experience in terms of teaching within a program like the new MSc in Financial Management. 
this applies also to uh, Arif, Professor Arif Kurshad. He has more experience than me. And also to the other members of our teaching staff, like for instance, Dr. Uh, Julian Jones. So I think that it's fair to say that you are in good hands in that, you know, if you join our program, we know what we are doing. We have been doing this for a long time in different contexts. And again, we are very committed, fully committed and excited to start this program in September. Uh, if you have any questions also, I want to say there is also a chance for you uh, through DAISY uh, to basically talk to me, okay? So I, I sometimes talk to applicants when they have specific questions, particularly questions related to the structure of the program and the academic delivery of the program. So I hand over now to Professor Ari Kushet. If you want to go ahead, please, with your introduction. Thank you, Medeo. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone from Manchester. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, and as Daisy and Amadeo said, we are a team. Uh, and we are very fortunate to have been involved with this MSc Financial Management Program from the start. So Amadeo and I actually developed it. And using our experience, um, and as Amadeo mentioned earlier, we have been teaching uh, our MBAs for a long period of time especially MBAs um, who are not on campus. So they do part-time MBA. So we do blended learning program with them. And all the learning we had through our experience by teaching them, we wanted to put all that into practice when we were launching your MSc Financial Management. So we will talk about this program in a bit more detail later on today, but let me first of all, uh, introduce myself to you. So uh, my name is Arif Rashid and I am professor of finance. Um, I have been at Manchester for a very long time. In fact, this is my first job. So I joined Manchester back in 1999 after finishing my PhD and I've been here since. So I've seen many stages of the business school and the university um, pass by. Um, in terms of the program itself, uh, we started working on your program about two years ago. And the idea was, what about those people who are, for example, working and cannot resign from their jobs and come to Manchester to do a master's? What about those people who did not get a chance to study finance as, as undergraduates, but are working in the financial industry or are looking to move to the financial industry, and yet they don't have a chance because any other MSc course from a good university, MSc in finance, for example, will always require you to have your undergraduate degree in finance. So we said, what about those who have not studied finance and who cannot come to Manchester for a full-time on-campus master's program? And this was the start towards this development of MSc Financial Management Blended Learning. So we came up with this idea that we can actually take teaching to you. So we can bring all the classes and the knowledge and the discussions to you rather than you come to us to Manchester. So you are a very special group of people who perhaps have their own lives, social, family, work life, and you are where you are and you cannot resign and you cannot come to Manchester. So this was the start of this new program and we developed a team together um, as uh, we will talk about this later on. You will be going through eight different courses in MSc Financial Management. And in the very first semester, we will introduce you to the foundations of accounting and foundations of finance. And the idea here is that we don't expect any of you to have any background in finance. It is our job. So my colleague, Julian Jones, who is an accountant and teaches accounting, or I who teach corporate finance, we will be starting with you through foundations of accounting and foundations of finance. And I will be running the foundations of finance course with you. Um, Amedia was talking about his research interests. Um, and there is an important point to be made here. So if you wonder, why do I need to be worried about people teaching me being researchers? What's the link? The link is that if Amadeo or myself or Julian or any other colleague who is teaching you a particular unit in this program is talking about a particular issue in the world of finance, it is very likely that they would have published papers or written books or have given interviews. They would have a lot of insight into what is really going on in the real world. And therefore, what they will be able to do with you is they will be able to teach you the theory of that particular topic, 
but at the same time, they will also be able to share with you what is really happening in the real world. Because what we feel is, and this is true for almost everyone who is an academic at Manchester Business School, that we have to be research active. This is half of what we do uh, as academics, because we can then bring our experience into the classroom and you can then start thinking about the relationship between theory and real world. In terms of my research interests, so I work on initial public offerings or IPOs, and many of you would have read about how by investing in IPOs, you can make a lot of money on the first day of trading. So this is when a company um, lists on a stock exchange and the process requires selling shares to new investors. So what are the problems? What are the challenges? How does the interaction take place? How does a company value itself so that they can decide on a selling share price? These are the kind of things I look at uh, within IPOs. At the same time, or I'm also interested in trade credit because this is the reality of business. When you do business with um, your clients or other businesses, very likely you will not receive cash for the goods or services you sell them. In other words, you provide trade credit to them. So what are the challenges about trade credit? Um, this is what I look at. Venture capital is another source of financing for many companies around the world. So we look at how VCs choose their target firms, uh, how do they make money, what is really happening internationally with venture capital in the sense that many VCs from the Western Hemisphere have moved into the Eastern Hemisphere in countries like China or India or Vietnam, because this is where all the action is. So how do they select their targets? How do they figure out if a particular company uh, would be a good investment for them? So this is what we look at in my um, study of venture capital. And I'm also moving uh, a bit towards politics and entrepreneurship, looking at um, how some of the world leaders as we have around us um, have made their money. So when they were business people and then they got into politics, so we started by looking at the ex-prime minister of Thailand. So that's a quite an interesting project that we have. And more importantly, myself and many of the colleagues within uh, the business school are really interested in this issue of financial literacy. And by financial literacy, we mean having prior knowledge of money and how do you manage money? And this is true for not only you and I, it's also true for children as well. It's also true for governments as we see around us these days. So um, at the business school, we are taking a lot of interest in reaching out to school children to start with, where we are talking to them about uh, the pros and cons of money management. So how do you look after your money? Uh, what is the meaning of credit? You know, these kind of life skills, uh, which will be very important for them as they grow up, because of course, in the post COVID, uh, period, there's so much uncertainty, and therefore this whole idea of saving and not spending too much is really at the forefront. Uh, in terms of my uh, other aspects uh, as an academic, so I have been an external consultant to uh, the UK financial regulator, we call this the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, uh, been the consultant to the British Venture Capital Association, and quite recently, uh, I was invited as an expert witness uh, in a matter of corporate dispute in London. So this has been uh, my background. Um, Daisy, we can move on to the next slide, please. Great. Thank you, Arif. Thank you, Amadeo. I um, appreciate your introductions. Um, so before I hand you back over to our academics, I wanted to kind of give you a brief insight into the Alliance Manchester Business School. So the MSc in Financial Management sits within the Alliance Manchester Business School, which in turn sits within the University of Manchester. So as you can see from this slide, we believe that we produce graduates who think that little bit differently. So we provide you as students with knowledge, expertise, skills, and ability to really thrive and excel in today's really competitive business environment. So a few stats, and I wanted to to give you a brief insight into kind of the, the university rankings. So I believe that when you're considering studying um, or further study, I believe it's important to bear these, these rankings in, in mind when you're considering your next academic career move. So you can see here that the University of, of Manchester is ranked sixth best uh, UK university. And last year it was actually uh, voted 29th in the world. However, 
this year we have actually been uh, voted 27th. So we're going up in the world. So this is something to, to really consider and bear in mind um, when you're looking at kind of institutions to, to further your study. So the, the Alliance Manchester Business School was established in 1965. So it was one of the first two business schools in the UK. Last year by the Financial Times, uh, they voted us uh, or ranked us a top 10 business school. And we have a global network of over 60,000 alumni students. And those students are actually based in a, quite a lot of countries. So 176 countries to be precise. So I think this is really important, again, to bear in mind, because we believe as, as kind of a team and academics and, and me kind of sitting in recruitment that having a good network will absolutely help you grow both personally and professionally in kind of your, your development. So I wanna to briefly touch on employability before I hand you back over to Arif and Amadeo. The University of Manchester last year was voted the number one most targeted university by graduate employers. So what that means is studying with us or gaining a qualification from us will make you that little bit more attractive to employers should you be applying for a new job in a different sector or looking to kind of progress in your current career. So having a stamp from the University of Manchester on your profile will absolutely put you in good stead and put you ahead of kind of someone else who's applying for that same role. Um, so that's a little bit about the history of the business school, where it sits, um, our stats and rankings. As I mentioned at the beginning of, of this webinar, should you have questions throughout, please do put them in the chat box so we can cover them for you at the end. So again, I'm going to hand you back over to Arif and Amadeo, who are going to talk about um, the kind of course in more detail, the units and the fact that we believe it's a very resilient qualification for you to undertake. Yes, of course, uh, I can, I can take this over for now. Uh, yeah, basically, we, we really believe that this is a resilient qualification. And uh, uh, if, if you think of it, uh, what we teach in this, uh, in this MSc in financial management is basically notions, tools uh, that are extremely important to understand how financial markets work, uh, how companies operate in those financial markets, and particularly how they can tackle some of the challenges that may arise on those financial markets and perhaps also from competitors. We are arguably in a very, very uh, uncertain scenario. People always say that, but indeed, uh, at the moment, we, we, really ha we really are in a very, very uncertain situation. Uh, and we believe basically that this qualification is extremely resilient because again, it equips people with skills like critical thinking skills or even tools that are always necessary for financial managers or finance professionals more generally. So just to give an example, in some of our units, uh, uh, we teach people how to evaluate a particular investment and to decide whether or not to go ahead with that particular investment. Well, arguably, this is the type of knowledge that a manager will always need uh, under any particular scenario, uh, whether we have a stable economy, whether we, have, we are in a pandemic or not, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, we need to be able as managers to evaluate investments to create value for the company. Uh, likewise, we need to be able to decide whether or not to, uh, I don't know, raise some capital from the market and how to raise it. These are very, very important decisions and are, they are even more important arguably now, uh, given the uncertainty. So we want basically to, in a sense, create leaders that are confident, flexible, but most of all, critical thinkers. That's very, very important for us. Leaders that somehow can deal with the challenges that may arise again from financial markets, uh, from uh, shocks affecting economies, and also from uh, shocks affecting industries in which their companies uh, uh, operate. Uh, one important point about the units in this, uh, in this uh, MSc in financial management is that uh, the assessments are essentially projects. Okay, we ask you to basically work on one or more questions. Uh, and these questions can be related to a case study on a fictitious company, but arguably they could also be related to actual companies, real companies, real events that happen uh, in the financial market. And we ask you to basically come up with a solution, with, a, with an answer, a reasoned answer for, that, for the particular question that we pose. So this is exactly the same process that a manager will follow in practice. Managers need to basically 
address some challenges, address some questions, and we want to teach people how to do that properly. It's also important to uh, understand that the techniques we, we teach in this particular MSC in financial management are applicable across the board. Uh, they're applicable, very applicable to large organization, multinational organizations, uh, both financial and non-financial, but they're also applicable to perhaps uh, small businesses, maybe it's businesses that are not uh, listed on a stock market, businesses that do not operate uh, globally, but perhaps only locally. Uh, I don't know, Arif, if you want to add something. Um, yeah, I'll just say, Amelia, that I think in addition to what you said about developing leaders who adapt to changes, who are confident, and more importantly, critical thinkers, I think another important aspect of our teaching at Manchester is we want you to be a socially responsible leader because this is actually ingrained in our existence as a university. Social responsibility is really very high in what Manchester University does. So when we were developing all the different modules for your MSc program, along with all the theory that you need to understand, but when it came to, or when it comes to applying that theory, many of us are quite mindful to select a problem where actually there is also a social angle to it. And just to give you a bit more example about this. So in my course, Foundations of Finance, and this is where I will, uh, teach you about how do you make financial decisions um, as the world around you changes. So it'll be a course about giving you the basic skills as to how you then build up your knowledge on finance in the second and third and fourth semester. So we will start with simple things like time value of money. Um, and if you say, well, what is the meaning of time value of money? A pound today or a dollar today is not the same as a pound next year. And you know the reason is that if you had the money today, you could invest it, so there is an opportunity cost. And secondly, for many economies around the world, there is inflation. So whatever you can buy today for a pound, you need more money to buy the same good next year. And for that reason, a pound today is not the same as a pound next year. So we will talk about things like time value of money, about capital budgeting. In other words, how do you decide on new projects? So what I've done, for foundations of finance course is that after I teach you all these skills, when it comes to putting theory into real world, I have actually selected a case study for you, whereby you are not only looking at financial numbers to arrive at your answer to a problem, you're also thinking about the social implications of your decision making. I have chosen a case study that is set in Mexico, and it's a, it's a study about a company that um, that sells cola, right? So it's a local company. And if you do your research, you will see uh, Mexico is seen as the very top end of obesity table by the World Health Organization. Uh, and one of the reasons is that there is a huge consumption of soft drinks in Mexico. So here you are, the owner or the finance manager of a company uh, that is selling cola in, in Mexico. And you're thinking about a new project, which is a sugar-free cola. So you, you do your numbers and then in the end you have to make a decision. Should we go ahead and launch this sugar-free cola or should we not? So this is a question that goes way beyond the financial analysis of will this new venture make money for my company or not? Because you also have to think about what would be the likely impact of your change of business practice on the society. So if by launching a sugar-free cola, you could contribute towards you know, the government's effort to bring down obesity levels in, in Mexico, for example, then that's exactly what a socially responsible leader would be expected to do. So what I'm trying to say here is that we have embedded where possible examples, assignments, case studies, and the likes, which also have a socially responsible angle attached to it because we don't want you to understand finance in isolation. It is not about number crunching. It's not only about making profits, no matter what the cost is. It's about making profits for yourself or your company, creating value for your firms, but at the same time being socially responsible lead. So that's, that's the only thing I wanted to add to what Amedeo um, just said to you. Yeah, so I want to also spend a little bit, uh, a few minutes actually to talk about the structure of the program. 
so first of all, we start slowly, uh, which, is, uh, which is something we want to do, we need to do also, because again, this is a program that is open to people with different expertise, different background, both academic and professionally. So we want to make sure that everybody can cope with the material of this program. And that's why we start quite slowly. We have two basic, two units essentially, foundational units uh, at the start of the program in semester one. One is called Foundations of Finance, one is called Foundations of Accounting. Of course, Arif already has spent quite a lot of time talking about Foundations of Finance, and it's a, it's a very important, it's a very, very important unit because ultimately it is a finance degree. So if we do not understand the foundations of the subject, that we do not understand uh, uh, much else. So it's a very, very key unit that we do at the very start for that reason. Uh, foundations of accounting is also very important because uh, sometimes uh, finance professionals do not understand accounting enough, but accounting is extremely important to a finance professional. We need to understand, for instance, if we are financial managers, we need to understand uh, the accounting numbers of our company to understand whether or not our company is performing well. Uh, if we are a financial analyst, again, we need to evaluate the company, perhaps the fundamentals of the company, looking at uh, the accounting numbers of the company. So foundations of accounting is extremely important alongside foundations of finance. And if you pass these two units uh, successfully and, and well, then everything else will fall into place. For instance, in the case of corporate finance, which is my unit, uh, I essentially restart from where uh, Arif uh, uh, finishes her uni his unit, but basically, I'm going to build on that quite heavily. There is an overlap between the two units in that I go back to some of the topics a little bit, but I try to build on that, I try to focus on perhaps on the same topics, but from different angles and bring in different challenges that financial managers face in practice. Like for instance, uh, in order to evaluate a project, we need the cost of capital to understand whether or not it's worth going ahead for, for, uh, with that project, considering the cost of the project, which is the cost of capital. But the question is, how do we compute the cost of capital in practice? That's what uh, we do in, uh, in my unit. Another question could be, how do we finance our company? Do we use debt or do we use equity capital? The other units are also uh, along the same lines, like global financial markets is a unit about uh, how the global financial markets work. We also have some statistical units. These are very, very important because they give you some basic statistical tools uh, that allow you then to analyze data. And these tools are useful throughout the program, but more pragmatically, they're also very useful when you do the final project, where you basically analyze some data of interest to you. Uh, in semester three, again, we strengthen even more uh, knowledge of, of financial uh, uh, accounts, basically. So we have this unit called financial statement analysis. Uh, we also try to broaden the perspective around corporate finance and financial management. We take it more internationally. Uh, and in this case, we deal with things like uh, uh, exchange rate risk, for instance, which is very important to multinationals. And again, we have another unit, which is a statistical unit, uh, that gives you further tools to analyze data, which is called quantitative methods for financial management. Uh, and the final year, sorry, in the final, not year, the final semester, so the final semester of the second year, basically, uh, we have two units that are somehow more specialized. One is specialized on a very important topic, venture capital and private equity. This is a very hands-on unit. So we literally go through the whole process that a venture capitalist or a private equity manager would follow to, to invest in a company. And, if, and the other one, business models and financial strategy is very, very important because basically here we think a bit more strategically. Again, it's not about uh, uh, just looking at numbers and trying to make sense of them. We think about the financial strategy of the company broadly and more in the long term. And finally, the group project. The group project is a chance for you to work uh, in a group uh, on a topic you are interested in, uh, collecting data, uh, perhaps unique data you're interested in, and analyzing data using some statistical techniques. And again, it's also a way to deal with some practical challenges that companies may face uh, in the real world out there. I don't know, Arif, if you want to add something at this stage on the units or... Uh, um, yeah. I think as what we had in the slides at the bottom of the slides, Medeo, um, 
the, the, the word blended is important because for all of these semesters, you will have three day face to face workshops. So for that reason, we say six days of face to face teaching. Of course, currently we are going through the COVID-19 situation. So we have to be very careful about having people on campus. Uh, but our hope is that this will pass and then we will be seeing you once um, every semester for six days because you'll be doing two courses. So that's a very important part of all of these uh, units that Amelia was talking about. Yeah. Yeah, th thanks for bringing it up. Actually, I wanted to spend uh, a few words about, you know, the blended approach. So what is this blended learning approach? Well, in a nutshell, it is an approach that is between two different approaches, the classical on campus uh, or campus based uh, approach and the other one, which is the purely online approach. Uh, we try to take uh, uh, a route somehow in the middle because we believe that there are pros and cons with both approaches and so we want to keep them. So Basically, most of the activities in this MSC Financial Manager will happen online, and some of them will be actually face-to-face, -face, but virtually. So there will be some face-to-face -face, uh, workshops also, or, or at least uh, sessions uh, like now, but this will be basically virtual. Uh, but alongside that, we also have face-to-face -face workshops that normally run as physical face-to-face -face workshops. So in other words, we are in the same place, uh, and for three days for each workshop. Uh, these are very intensive. Uh, and at the end of the workshop, generally you uh, submit uh, a group-based uh, coursework that counts for 50% of the credits for that particular unit. So as Arif was saying, uh, we hope for the best. So we're going to have these workshops, uh, ideally face-to-face -face physically, uh, uh, but if, uh, if there is an emergency, we can also have uh, a virtual face-to-face -face workshop and it works quite well also uh, and we have experience with that too. Uh, in terms of commitment, uh, uh, you know, it will depend on you uh, ultimately, but we think that you should spend something like 15 hours per week of study on average. There will be more intensive and less intensive periods. You can manage your time very well around also your uh, work and other types of commitments, but I think 15 hours on average is a fair uh, a uh, bit of work to pass this, uh, uh, these units for this uh, MSc in Financial Management. There are eight uh, uh, 15 credit units, as you probably know by now. And the final project is very important because in the final project actually, uh, I mean, it carries uh, quite a lot of units, so quite a lot of credits, sorry. So it's a very exciting opportunity for you to work on a project. At the same time, it carries uh, 60 credits. So it's very, very important. Uh, there are no exams. So again, uh, uh, the fact that there are no exams means that we ask you to work uh, on some questions of practical relevance, and we ask you to think critically uh, about and creatively about those questions. Perhaps we ask you to go away, do some research, gather some data, and come up with a solution that is unique, a unique solution that you provide to us. So it's a very, very, I think, I think it's a very important experience for you to learn the tools that we teach. It's also a very flexible uh, program in that uh, it lasts for two years, but we can stretch it to up to five years in case of delays, in case you need to suspend your studies. Uh, in terms of method of learning, I don't know if you are, if you want to spend a few words about the different methods yeah, that sure. we, um, we use. So we have a mix, uh, as you can see on the slide in front of you. Um, so a course will be launched, all the material uh, for a particular unit will be available on a platform which is called Blackboard. So before you start a semester, all the learning material will be made available to you online, including the electronic textbooks. And along with that, there will be a study schedule so that you know exactly where you have to be at different points of time within a semester. So along with all the material that will be available to you, we will supplement that with online tutorials. So your course schedule will tell you when these tutorials will take place. This would be an opportunity for you to connect with your teacher, your peers, discuss about a particular uh, issue that you are studying in that particular module, try to relate this to the real world if something is happening around you. So we will have online tutorials. Um, there will be some video content. So for example, uh, a common um, content that you will find across different modules is that 
every module will have topics. So for example, in foundations of finance, you will have topic one, two, three, four, and so on. And for every topic, what I've done is I have recorded a short video for you where I talk to you about what is this topic? Why is it relevant? How does it connect to the previous topic that you have done? Uh, and what are the learning outcomes from this? So it gives you a bit of a narrative, a bit of a start so that you can say, all right, so this is where this particular topic in my course sits. So the video will help you with that. Um, there'll be a lot of interactive learning with your peers because we believe in the idea of social learning. Once you have formed your groups and you're discussing a problem, these problems could be actually discussed online because we will have discussion forums for every course unit every semester. So I taught you about a particular topic and suddenly you read in the media about something that happened and you say, oh, well, you know, Arif, what do you think about this? Or I ask you a question. So we learned about this bit, uh, this bit last week and you've um, read in the Financial Times this week that something happened. So what do you think is your opinion? So, you know, we will be having all these discussions online, uh, which will be very interactive uh, and they will all be within what is called a discussion forum. Uh, so this is where people will put up uh, topics where there'll be discussion ongoing and your teacher will be keeping an eye on these discussion forums uh, and will intervene where required. Uh, and this way we connect with you. Um, Amidia has already spoken about the face-to-face -face teaching through the workshops. I think for all of us, this is really the highlight of any unit that you will do in the program. Those three days per module that you are with us, be in Shanghai or in Manchester, I mean, this is really when we are standing in front of you and that you are having say nine to five every day where we are as we teach on campus. In fact, um, if you do your maths, you will have the same amount of face-to-face -face time with your teachers as full-time students do. Because if you look at nine to five for three days at a stretch, we're looking at around 25 hours or so. And this is exactly what is the length of a usual course that is taught full-time on campus. And the only difference is on campus, we will teach this course two hours a week over a whole semester. Whereas when you are with us for three days, very intensive. And it works very, very well because everything that you have seen and done online, you're now there live with your peers, with your teacher, solving a financial problem. So face-to-face -face teaching through workshops, interactive learning, videos, online tutorial, at the same time, the online material that is made available to you at the start of the semester, they've put together are the main methods of learning. And this is true for all the modules that you will have in your program. Brilliant. Thank you, Arif. Thank you, Amadeo. One thing I want to kind of briefly touch on before we, we wrap up is the level of support that you're going to re receive as an online learner. Now, some of you may have not kind of studied online before it may have just been purely on campus so I appreciate that you may be slightly apprehensive it's a different way of studying but the level of support and teaching that you will receive is the same level as our on-campus students do like Arif said so in terms of the support you obviously have myself at the very beginning of that decision making journey that you're going through once you have successfully achieved an offer from us um, and you're looking to enroll in September I kind of hand the baton over to our study advisor. She's called Melissa and um, she's great. And we've also got Maria as well. So Maria and Melissa will kind of help you in terms of your non-academic queries that you have throughout your studies. So they will induct you at the very beginning of your, your course so that you are familiar and comfortable with learn, uh, using that virtual learning environment um, because that might be slightly different to what you're used to. Like Arif and Amadeo said, you're going to have academics that are teaching you and the very best academics that are providing you with really rich content to learn from. They're also on hand to answer questions that you have through the discussion boards, over email and whatever that may be, to really help you get the most out of the degree. Um, so I feel that, that the support that we offer is, is really great and I think that it is the same as our on-campus students. You're not alone just because you are studying quite a lot of the time remotely um, across the world at various different countries and kind of at different time zones. But we offer that support and we are on hand to, to really help you get the most out of, of this programme. So um, I want to kind of wrap up. 
like I said, my role is your course advisor. So I'm here to support you to here to kind of understand a little bit about you as, as a individual, learn about your goals, aspirations in order to help you make that really informed decision about your next academic career move. I feel that talking to others about your goals makes you more likely to commit to them. So please do contact me if you haven't already. And I know a few of you on today's call I have had quite in-depth conversations with, so hi everyone. But if you would like to, to talk to me further, please contact me. My email is studyonline at manchester.ac.uk. Going back to what I said at the very beginning of, of this webinar, um, I also conduct individual consultations. So that's over Zoom, so a little bit like this, where we can have quite in-depth discussions about the course, the support that we offer, and kind of your goals and, and aspirations as well. So I can see that we haven't had any questions come through. So I just wanted to, to make you all aware that we are rolling this course out in September 2020 in Manchester and in Shanghai. So we are at kind of the beginning of July. So we are wrapping up recruitment. Um, however, uh, you've still got time. So you've still got time to kind of submit your application. So then again, contact me for, for kind of further information about what we require in terms of your application form and things like that. Now I can see a few questions have come come through, which is great. So somebody has asked how the optional modules works because on the website it mentions there are 12 units. So Arif and Amadeo, would you like to pick that question up? Oh, Amadeo, I think you're muted. Yeah, I've forgotten. I've forgotten my microphone was muted. Yeah, at the moment we do not have uh, optional uh, optional units. So basically, there are eight units, uh, and these eight units uh, are uh, essentially those that are workshops. Okay, these are like standalone units, and then we have uh, a group project unit, which actually includes three different components in a sense. So it includes uh, two virtual sub units. These are basically the quantitative techniques uh, units. Uh, these, are, uh, these are just virtual, okay? So you have, of course, face-to-face -face virtual sessions, but there are no face-to-face -face workshops with a physical somehow, presence of the teacher. And then you also have the final project, which is basically the most important part of this group project unit, okay? So eight uh, standalone units with face-to-face -face workshops uh, in Manchester or uh, Shanghai. And then uh, you have two virtual uh, units somehow that are part of the group project and a final group project. Great, thank you, Amadeo. And I've now had a question come through. Um, is it possible that the MSc in Financial Man Management facilitates its student for a banking internship during the course in the UK? Now, I think the answer to that question is, is no. Um, Arif Ado, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, I just want to say that we will support you, Mohammed. I think that's what your question was. We'll support you to look for opportunities like internships, but the university cannot promise you some kind of uh, internship. You know, we can't do this. Our expectation is that most of you would already be working or were looking to work, and you're looking to change your career perhaps. Uh, we will support you through advice, uh, through writing reference work for you. Plus, you will have access to the careers advisory center that we have at the university, whereby our full-time students, be it MBAs or masters or undergraduates, get a lot of support. A lot of employers actually come on campus, um, but you will be like others, you know, where you'll have to figure out if there is an opportunity outstanding, you can come and speak to us, your program director or your teachers, and we will help you uh, in terms of giving you advice, but we cannot sort of guarantee that we will be able to facilitate a, a banking internship during your time with us. And remember that um, you know, if you are in a full-time job, you have to always be careful about you know, that you, know, you are up to speed with your studies and so on. So we would um, uh, you know, encourage you to be working, uh, but our support in finding you a job would be quite limited. It'll be a support rather than to help you, you know, to get you a job. Great, thank you, Arif. And, and again, I just wanted to kind of highlight the, the point that I spoke about earlier on in, in today's session about the university being the number one most targeted university for graduate, graduate employers. So 
what I mean to say here is when you are studying with us or you gain this qualification from us, you will be that bit more attractive to, to employers when you are applying for, for other careers, um, either changing in career or looking to progress in your career as well. So again, that's something to bear in mind. Now I've had another question, Arif and Amadeo, if you, if you don't mind. So what access do we have to the reading and library material? Yeah. And then a the second, oh, go on. Yeah, I can take there. first that one, so we can do one one each perhaps you can take one each yeah so basically the, the about the library of course uh, you have access to our databases uh, unless uh, except basically those very few databases uh, uh, for which access is only on campus so there may be some databases and very specialist databases but not many uh, where basically access uh, somehow can only be obtained when you are on campus okay but i would say 99.9 percent .9 of databases especially uh, those databases you are going to use perhaps to write your projects like, you know, databases concerning uh, archival material, concerning uh, papers, uh, books, etc. These databases will be available to you. Uh, also, the textbook, again, will be provided by us. Uh, it will be an e-book. Uh, and of course, we are going to provide also references to, uh, to our papers that you may want to read or other books. So I would say most of the material is accessible, most of the material we have in the library is accessible to you. And we have a very large set of databases available to students uh, that they can use for their work. I don't know if you are, if you want to. Yeah, no, just saying that you will, have, you will have the same rights, Mikhail, um, and privileges like a full-time student. The only difference being, because you may not be physically present on campus in Manchester, uh, there may be just a handful of databases where we are restricted. Uh, to have to use a university laptop, for example, or a PC, which is in the library for you to download your data. Minus that, you will have the same access like any other Manchester student. In other words, you will have full access to the library material, which is online, so all the journals, um, which are electronic, uh, all the electronic books you may wish to have. You could be anywhere in the world and you will have access because you will be a Manchester student. The next part of your question was, uh, Will there be recorded, recorded lectures or will there only be tutorial videos? Uh, it'll be a mix of all. So at the start, you will have all the material uploaded, which you can, and there is a narrative that will help you to go through this material in your own time, because we will also give you a schedule. But then every unit of your program will have two live lectures. So for example, in Foundations of Finance, what we do is we will start actually with a face-to-face -face workshop if you are having one. So three days with us to start with, and this will be followed by two live lectures somewhere in the middle and then towards the end of the semester. Lectures like now, where we will be discussing where are we in the module, the way forward, if there's an assignment, we will discuss that. So um, that would be the live lectures. We call them the e-lectures. So they would not be recorded, your teacher will be with you and you will be wherever you are in the world and you will have a session like we are having right now, um, two lectures per unit. Uh, in terms of the tutorials, um, they would be based on the, um, the, the, the unit convener's requirements. So if I feel um, we need to have a, a smaller group to discuss a particular topic, I may call for a tutorial as we go along. So there will be an email from us, there will be some announcement made saying, we are going to have a session. Uh, and if you are free, you could join on so-and-so date or the session will be recorded so you can look at it in your own time. So that would be your tutorial, but there will be no standard format for a tutorial. So if there is a need, we will create a tutorial, but definitely every unit will have two lectures throughout the semester along with the three-day uh, three face-to-face workshop. Great, thank you both. Um, and I've got a final question. So after successful completion of this degree, what would the professional destination be? So could it be in the banking sector or kind of stock trading and brokerage? I'm going to hand that over to, to you. Yeah, I can, perhaps yeah, I can start, I can have a start and then I can also let Tarif uh, give some input. Yeah, I would say it's wide open, really. I mean, the techniques that we, we teach. Uh, so essentially in this MSC Financial Manager, we want you again to understand some of the key techniques uh, the different finance professionals, including, uh, I mean, going from financial managers working for multinationals to financial analysts. These are techniques that basically uh, managers have to use and finance professionals have to use. So it's very, very wide open for you. 
we, we, we're not limiting you. We're not saying, you know, if you finish this MSc, you are going to end up in this particular job or that particular job. You could end up in definitely the banking sector. You could, you could end up being a financial analyst. You could perhaps uh, have a career progression within the corporation in which you work at the moment. You could become maybe as a CFO of that company. So it's really, really widely, uh, widely open for you. Uh, there are basically no limits potentially. Uh, Arif, I don't know if you want to add yeah, something. Yeah, just to add that, um, you know, it's MSc in financial management. So that's the reason why we, we took the title of financial management rather than MSc in financial economics or financial mathematics, which takes you to a specific area of the finance sector. So if you look at the selection of modules that we have for you, we have a bit of accounting, we have a bit of corporate finance, we have a bit of financial decision making, there's a bit of strategy. Uh, we will talk about new um, areas of finance, for example, so Bitcoins, you know, cryptocurrency is also included there as well. Uh, global financial markets will have discussions about um, foreign exchange rates. So, you know, you will get a sense of the main areas in the world of finance, and it's entirely up to you in the end, where you find your niche, what really interests you. Uh, and then, of course, you can speak to us. We will be available um, for discussion. So it's entirely up to you. Banking sector, brokerage, trading, as you put it, app, exactly, you know, whatever you wish. We hope that between these eight modules plus the 60 credit project, you will be very well placed, like any other one person, to be uh, up there for looking for jobs in the financial industry. So it's a very generic sort of take on different areas of finance, and hence we call it financial management. Great, thank you so much. Now, I know we're, we are slightly over time, but I'm gonna just cover the, the last two questions that have come through, if that's okay. I appreciate your time as always, Amrish and Amadeo. So we've got a question for, about kind of the, the on-campus um, and the conferences. So do we have to decide on one campus location or can we attend courses in Manchester and Shanghai? Arif, Amadeo, over to you. Yeah, I think you need to you need to make a, a decision at the start of your program concerning which one main campus. Uh, and of course, uh, this is at least uh, for the first year. That's what uh, that's what the situation is at the moment. So basically, you need to make a decision. You will have to attend uh, uh, workshops in that particular center. Uh, we may also uh, over in the future we may reevaluate this and give uh, some flexibility to some students as to whether or not they can basically attend some of the workshops uh, uh, in a di on a different uh, in a different place essentially and potentially also switch from one center to the other. But at the moment, yes, you will have to make a choice at least initially. Um, and uh, the second one, uh, I don't know if Ari, if you want to take this. I mean, I can yeah, say something can. very yeah. The second yeah, one. Um, so, Mamal, you were asking about how does this MSc Financial Management compare with degrees like EMBA in finance? Uh, it all depends what EMBA actually includes in the degree. So it all depends upon the institution. But if you look at a generic EMBA in finance, I think what will be different between us and EMBA is that we will teach you the theory to start with because you can really understand finance if you know the theoretical underpinnings. And then we take you to the other side of the fence where we then give you an opportunity to apply your theory into real world. In an MBA program, usually theory is missing because the whole idea is, tell me, how do I find a solution to a problem? But here, we're taking you one step backwards. First of all, understand the problem through your principles of accounting and finance. And then we take you to the, to the world where you can solve it. So. If you remember, Amadeo at the very start talked about critical thinking. It is critical thinking that is supported by the underpinnings of the world of finance. MBA does not allow you to do that because we also teach on MBA and there's always a tension between how much theory and how much real world. And as teachers, we can tell you, well, no, this is what's going to work. But then the question is, why will the solution work? And to understand that why and how you really need to understand the principles of financial management. So your MSc, first of all, will give you those theoretical underpinnings and then will take you one step ahead to apply that knowledge to solve problems as they arise. That would be a big difference between an MBA in finance and a master's in finance. 
Brilliant. Thank you both. And thank you to everyone who has asked some, some really great questions on today's session. It's nice to see some current offer holders, some, some applicants and some people who are at the early stages of their decision making process on today's call. So on behalf of us all here, thank you so much for joining. There are my contact details. If you have further questions or would like to talk to me in a little bit more detail or absolutely talk to Amadeo, please get in touch with me and I can put you in, point you in the right direction and talk to you um, further about this course and your aspirations and next steps. So again, Amadeo, Arif, thank you as always for your time and thank you to everyone for joining today's session. We look forward to hopefully receiving um, an application from you for September 2020 in due course. So I wish you all the best and I will speak to you soon. Bye. Okay, goodbye everyone. Bye. Bye.